Hi everyone, uh, welcome to video notes part two. So we're going to go over part two of our unit six note packet today, and that deals with the Pythagorean theorem, um, skill target 15. But now this is going to be the main component of target 15, so actually performing the Pythagorean theorem. Um, you guys know of the Pythagorean theorem. We've talked about it between uh, ninth grade math and 10th grade math algebra and geometry and, and everywhere in between. And so let's just remind ourselves of what this is and let's get used to using it and verifying if things are right triangles or not. So um, here we go. Here's a general triangle over here. One of the most crucial things we need to know about Pythagorean theorem is it has to happen. It only applies if we actually have a right triangle. So that box in the bottom corner of our triangle here, that's crucial. We've got to have or we've got to know that an angle is 90 degrees. If we don't, this relationship doesn't exist necessarily in the triangles, um, but it does every time that we have a right triangle. Now, when we have a right triangle, we have two sides. They're called legs. The legs form to meet at the 90 degree angle. So here's a leg side. Here's a leg side. Notice, right, they intersect where that 90 degree angle forms. So those are called our legs. And our legs are the two short sides. The most crucial one here um, is the side that's across from our 90 degree angle. So if you ever find the 90 degree angle in your triangle, look across from it. That side is called the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always, oops, always longest side. It is always the longest side. And that is very very important to know. And again, it's always across from the 90 degree angle. Now, what our, uh, Pythagore or what our Pythagorean theorem is as a relationship, as far as the equation goes, is simply just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So again, looking at our general triangle here, c is always the hypotenuse. So c is always across from our 90 degree angle. That's why it is so important. As far as A and B goes, it doesn't really matter. A and B are just the legs, and it doesn't matter which one's A or which one's B, but it does matter that C is the longest side, always the hypotenuse. And so for a general uh, sense here, right, we're just doing leg squared plus the other leg squared, and that will always equal your hypotenuse squared. Now, let's apply this here. So. Find the length of the missing side for each right triangle. Um, we'll do that because, right, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared applies. And so the key here is what's c? So find your right angle, our 90 degree angle, look across the triangle for it, that is side c. So that's where our x is here, which means six and eight are a or b, doesn't matter which one. And so this equation is gonna be six squared plus eight squared equals x squared. And then we just have to solve this. And it's a step-by-step -step process. Order of operation says square everything first, or really it says do the exponents first after parentheses. So that's square six gives us 36. Eight squared is 64. And that still equals x squared. That doesn't change because we don't know what x is yet. And then let's add these two numbers together. 36 plus 64 is 100. And that's gonna equal x squared. And then this is an important step. We don't want x squared, we want just x. And remember what x will be is our missing side. So we need to undo x squared and we do that by square rooting both sides. The square and the square root cancel each other out if you will. Um, they are inverses and that leaves us with x equals and it'll equal whatever the square root of 100 is, which is 10. So x equals 10 in this case. Now, let's do it again. Again, the crucial part is we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared on all this. The crucial part is which one's c? So find your right angle, look across your triangle. This time, 13 is c. That means x and 5 are a or b. So our equation is going to look a little different. It's going to be x squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. Remember, we're always equaling whatever c squared is. And so now we'll square everything. X squared stays. 5 squared is 25. And 13 squared is 169. And again, we need to get X by itself. So we got to start with getting X squared by itself. And this time we're going to subtract 
that number from both sides. So subtract 25 from both sides. So x squared equals 144. And the last step all the time, take the square root of x squared and the square root of whatever the other number is. And so x is going to equal, and this time it'll tell us 12. So x is 12 in this diagram. All right, one more, and let's keep cruising here. Got to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Got to know which one c squared is. Find your right angle, look across. And so now our setup's going to be x squared plus 8 squared equals 12 squared. Remember, we're always equaling whatever c squared is. Square them. Subtract them. x squared is going to equal 80. And then just recognize that sometimes um, we get perfect squares, and that's nice. Other times we have to reduce radicals or just go straight to decimals. If we take the square root of both sides here, we get x equals. And then applying um, part one's lesson, we can simplify 80. Um, that breaks into 16 times 5, which ultimately reduces to 4 root 5. And as a decimal, that would equal 8.9. And for now, both of those options are good options, whether whatever you're most comfortable with. All right, so that's it at a general sense. So now let's a answer a couple more trickier questions. So find the altitude of an isosceles triangle if the legs are 10 inches and the base is 8. So an isosceles triangle looks like this. Isosceles triangle has two sides that are congruent. Um, those are called the legs. So we can put 10 by each of them. Legs are 10, which leaves that bottom side, the base, being 8. Now, we want to find the altitude, which is the height. And so I'm going to draw that in by zooming in. The height connects the top here in between where our congruent legs are, are intersecting. And it goes straight to the bottom middle of the base. And it creates a 90-degree angle. And so basically what we have here is um, creates a right triangle, which is important for a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it also cuts that bottom base in half. So each side of it in this problem is going to be four. So I want to kind of like focus on this half of our triangle that we just drew. So we've got our height here. I'll label that as H. We know that this part is four and this slanted side is 10. Here's a 90 degree angle. And now we can apply A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Find your 90. Across from it is C. And so 10 is C this time, so this time h squared plus 4 squared equals 10 squared. And let's solve that quickly. h squared plus 16 equals 100. Subtract your 16. h squared equals 84. And then take the square root of that. And h is going to equal, this time we're just going to go straight to decimals, and it is 9.2 recognize they're asking, right, it's a word problem, and so there are units, so it is 9.2 inches here. Now, just a reminder, we want to know what a height and an altitude is. It is that dashed line I drew in the center of my triangle, and it always meets the, the a side across from it at a 90 degree angle, and so that's why we were able to apply Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's find the area of each figure here. So finding the area of each figure, as you can see, these are 90 uh, right triangles. So we're going to be able to apply a squared plus b squared equals c squared to figure out missing sides. And then area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. And your base times height makes a 90 degree angle. And so that's crucial. So like our base can be 3 over here. And then our height would be the other side. That makes a 90 degree angle with it. Same deal over in the other triangle. 12 could be our base, let's say. And then this other side that makes a 90 degree angle with it would be our height. And so that's why we have to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find that missing side first. And then we can plug it into our area formula. So let's go ahead and do that. Find your 90. Look across from it. That's c. I'm going to call our missing side x in this problem. And so this would be like x squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. And then square it and solve it. x squared plus 9 equals 25. 
subtract your 9, x squared equals 16, and then we can take the square root of that, so x is going to equal 4. Now, that's not our final answer, that's this side, and so our area is going to equal 1 half, or you can think of it as 0.5, or divided by 2. And then these two sides, the ones that create our 90 degree angle, are our base and our height doesn't matter which one's which, so we're just going to do 3 times 4. And if you type that under your calculator, it's like 3 times 4 divided by 2, essentially, which is going to give us 12 divided by 2, which is 6. Now, notice the units, inches, and area has squared units, so it is inches squared as our final answer. All right, let's do the same thing in this problem. As you can tell, we are missing a side that makes our 90 degree angle. So that will be one of our base and our height in our triangle area formula. But we gotta find it and then we can use it. To find it, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? The Pythagorean theorem. Across from the 90 is c. So we'll go um, x squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. Solve this one. 12 squared is 144. 15 squared is 225. Subtract the 144. On both sides x squared equals 81 and then we take the square root of that and it's nice we get x equals 9 so another whole number again that is just part of the process now we find the area with the two sides that form the right angle so area will equal one half one of those numbers is our base we can call it 12 and our height 9 Type that into your calculator, and you should be getting 54. And again, units are centimeters, and they are squared units, so centimeters squared. All right. Let me double-check our time here on the screen record. 